When you think of a keyboard, you most likely think of a full-size keyboard. But there are many different sizes of keyboards, like the TKL as well as the 60% keyboard. So which size keyboard is the best for you? I'm gonna go through the pros and cons of each, and by the end of the video, you'll know exactly which size keyboard will be the best fit for you. Before we start this video, I've noticed a lot of people that watch my videos are not subscribed, which I do understand because I just review products, but it would be really appreciated if you did subscribe. I'm pretty sure it's around somewhere like 99% of people are not subscribed to my channel. Um, I'm trying to improve my quality of my videos. As you can tell, I just got a new setup. So let me know how you like that as well. So I'll only be showing the 60% TKL and full size keyboards in this video, but there are many other sizes of keyboards. These are just the three main size keyboards and they're the only ones that I have experience with. So I'm just gonna be doing pros and cons for those. So let's get right into the video. I'm gonna start off with the 60% keyboard. Um, this is the Ann Pro 2. And if you end up going for a 60% keyboard, this is by far my favorite 60%. So um, yeah, I would go for that if you end up choosing. Um, it's got a lot of good features that um, other 60% keyboards don't have, like the Ducky 1 2 Mini. Um, if you want to go see a comparison between the two, I have a video for that on my channel as well, as well as a full review of the Ann Pro 2. So if you see like a small keyboard that uh, your favorite YouTuber or streamer uses, it's most likely a 60% keyboard that they're using. Since it is smaller, it takes up a lot less room on your desk. And if you have an extended mouse pad, it allows for a lot more mouse movement, which is good if you play FPS games, um, which is what I mostly play. So that's why I use a 60% keyboard most of the time. Also, because it's the smallest, it's the easiest to take on the go. Um, you can just pop this right in your backpack. It's really light um, and it would be really good if you are planning on traveling a lot. And if you're using this for a laptop, it's good to take, like if you want to bring it to school or something like that, it'd be really nice. Also with the Ant Pro 2, it does have this tap feature for the arrow keys where you can just tap like these and it acts like the arrow keys. So you don't really miss the arrow keys that much which is another reason why I would recommend the Ann Pro 2 over other 60% keyboards. Also, it's the cheapest of the three because of its size, it takes a lot less material to make, so you can find them pretty cheap. The Ann Pro 2 you can find on the market for around like 60 bucks, like max. You can probably find it on sale for less on a bunch of sites, and it's a really good keyboard for that price, and it's actually insanely good, and I would recommend picking that up if you are looking for the 60% keyboard. So we'll get into the disadvantages of 60% keyboards here. So I, like I said, the Ann Pro 2 does have the tap feature for the arrow keys, but most 60% keyboards do not, um, which requires you to get used to having to hold the function key and then press the arrow keys, which is kind of hard to get used to, which is why it is a disadvantage for me. Also, if you need the numpad, do not go with the 60% keyboard, of course, because it does not have the numpad at all. As well as another disadvantage is it is missing the, uh, the function row that would be on the top here. It just has the number row here. Um, so if you really use the function key a lot, I would go for a bigger keyboard and not the 60% uh, keyboard. So next we'll move on to a TKL or 10 keyless keyboard. Uh, I'm using the mass drop control keyboard for this. So some of the advantages of a TKL. So TKLs do have that function row and they do have the dedicated arrow keys. So if you use either one of those, I would go with the TKL. It is also bigger than the 60% keyboards, but it is smaller than the full size keyboard. So if you want those arrow keys and function keys, but you don't use the numpad at all, I would go with this keyboard. So yeah, this is actually the smallest keyboard you can get without losing any actual keys because the number pad would just be on the number row. So you don't actually lose the full number pad um, if you uh, don't need that. So some of the disadvantages are it is bigger than the 60% keyboard. So if you want the smallest size keyboard, um, the 60% is probably your best bet. Um, it does not have that number pad. So if you need that and use it a lot, um, you would have to go um, a little bit bigger like the full size keyboard for the number pad 
um, and also it is a little bit bigger than the 60% keyboard so if you want the smallest size keyboard the 60% is probably your best bet so last but not least we have the full size keyboard I'm gonna be using the Razer Black Widow Elite in this video so some of the advantages of a full size keyboard so most of them have media keys on the actual keyboard itself which is really nice so you don't have to actually press pause or anything or mute you can just like right here you can mute and you can pause fast forward skip and all that right on the keyboard itself which is really cool and also if you are looking for that numpad this is the only keyboard that like size that has the numpad so if you need that it's perfect because it has it and of course it has the most keys possible so um, if you want macros or anything like that, some of them actually have dedicated macros on the side here. Um, this keyboard does not, but it does have a lot of other keys that you can record macros onto, like the number pad. If you don't use that, the number pad can be used for macros. It does have a USB pass-through that um, most full-size keyboards actually do have the USB pass-through, which is really good if you want to plug in your mouse to the keyboard, so you take up like you don't see the cables as much, which is really nice. Now, of course, the biggest con for this keyboard is that it is really big compared to the 60% keyboard. It's like almost double or triple the size, not triple, but you get the gist. And also because of the size, it's so big that it is really hard to travel with. Um, you would need a pretty big backpack to put this in. And yeah, that's pretty much the cons for a full size keyboard. So in conclusion, I would recommend if you play FPS games or if you just want a really small keyboard to go with the 60% keyboard. But if you do want those arrow keys and you still want a smaller keyboard, go with the TKL. And if you just want the most keys possible and you really like the functionality of the media keys and the number pad, go with the full size keyboard. But in my opinion, the best size for a keyboard would have to be the 60% keyboard. I use this keyboard almost all the time. Um, I sometimes switch to TKL and I hardly ever use the full size keyboard. But the 60% keyboard is my favorite, especially the Ann Pro 2 because of the tap feature and everything like that. And to me, it just looks the best out of all of them. Um, honestly, it to me, it's probably the best looking keyboard because of its size it's so small doesn't take up a lot of desk room and it's honestly really cool to have um, and it's the best for FPS players in my opinion thanks for watching this entire video if you made it this far don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell I really appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you guys in the next video